Okay, so please bear with my camera. Um, I'm trying to do this without a tripod, so it's a little difficult. Um, but the basics are you're gonna identify your patient, you're gonna check your doctor's orders, and um, ensure that you have an order to start an IV. Typically at hospitals, you don't need an order to start an IV. It's just a what comes with an admission at the hospital. Everyone has an IV when they enter the hospital and are admitted. However, if you are hanging fluids or giving medications through the IV, then you would need an order for that. Let's just say we have a patient, they have an order to get an IV, and so we're gonna start the process. We wanna have our patient, we wanna identify a vein, um, we wanna grab our supplies. This is a common um, IV uh, catheter found at the ho local hospital that I work at and at the clinical sites uh, many of our students go to. There's also um, different um, catheter, uh, you know, brands. Um, there's the auto guard, which I'll go more in depth of like how to insert these particular um, IVs. As you can see, it's a little different. Um, there's this brand here, again, a little different. So basically, if you were to combine this and this, you get this. It's like two in one, I guess you could say. These are the most updated ones we have at my hospital I work at. One thing to note also is the color coding. So it doesn't really matter what um, IV brand you have, every gauge has the same color. So for example, this is a 24 gauge and it's yellow and it's a different brand than this, but you can see this is also a 24 gauge and it's a yellow. Also, for example, this is a 20 gauge, as you can see here, my finger's covering it, a 20 gauge, and this is a different brand, but if I were to grab one of these, it's a pink and it's also a 20 gauge. So just knowing that different colors represent different gauges, I would use maybe a yellow for like a pediatric patient because it's a smaller gauge. Um, something to note is with IVs, the bigger the number, the smaller the gauge. So 24 gauge for like a pediatric patient, this would might be for like a 20 gauge for a, um, let's say a geriatric patient or a med surge patient, adult patient. Oh, I'm sorry, that was 20. I meant 22. 22 for a um, geriatric patient or med surge patient. 20s are typically used for adult patients. Um, there's also 18 gauges, which are a bigger gauge. These are typically for like a trauma, um, if you're infusing blood, um, surgeries, things like that. Again, color coordinating greens are 18. I have different cleaning devices. So within this actual IV star kit, there is a, um, I'll show you when I open it up, but it is like a little chlorhexidine swab to clean the site. Some kits also come with little uh, chlorhexidines like this where you will break the wings and all the solution will come here and you'll scrub. Some also come with little preps like this. So depending on what you're given in your kit or depending on what supplies you have at your hospital, these are other things that you might use or even just a good old um, alcohol. You just wanna make sure whatever site you go to insert, it's clean prior to insertion. This IV kit right here has already the extension connected to it. If you were to insert, let's say, the um, IntraCan like this, you're just left with a little nub. So you wouldn't have that extra extension piece that we have here. So then for supplies, you would also want to gather an extension um, tubing like this. And again, there's different forms of extension tubing, basically the same concept. It has a little hub where you connect your flush and a hub that connects to the catheter itself once you insert it. So lots of different materials. You'll find out what works best for you. Um, with these as well, they come with a little um, hub at the end that you could flush and connect. I prefer a clave. That's just what my preference is, but by all means you can use this that's in, in the kit as well as a, um, as a hub to put on the end. We have our order, we have our supplies, we've got a flush, we've got alcohol, we've got gloves and sanitizer, we've got our patient. We have an order to insert the IV. There so, we go. Um, one thing I tell my students is before you even go to poke the patient, you wanna get all your supplies set up first. So um, prior to even you know, starting the insertion process, 
make sure you have everything ready because you don't want to have to leave the room and come back. It just adds more time. So we'll start by hand sanitizing. All right. Again, we're rubbing, rubbing either hand hygiene in the sink or hand hygiene as you're coming in the door, scrubbing, rubbing for 30 seconds at least. And again, we've already checked our orders. We have identified this is the patient. We have an order to start an IV. The patient's being admitted to the hospital. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get our, you don't have to have gloves on for this. So we'll go ahead and open up our kit. So with the IV star kit, again, it comes with pretty much everything you'll need. You can always grab extras if you'd like, um, depending on your patient. Maybe if they're on blood thinners or whatnot, you might wanna grab an extra set of two by twos. Um, but in general, the IV start kits have everything they need. Also, one thing to note is you wanna uh, check the expiration date. Um, obviously this is expired, so we're gonna ignore that. But you're starting, um, you know, to insert anything or, um, you know, perform a task, you always wanna ensure that they, um, the supplies are not expired. So we'll say, for example, this IV star kit is not expired. We've checked our flush, it's also not expired. We've checked our um, catheter. It is also not expired. It's a really small expiration date right here. Everything's good. Nothing's expired. Um, we are going to get our supplies ready. So what I like to do with the tourniquet because they're really like tight is I kind of just, see how tight it is? Kind of just get it and stretch it out a little bit because it's like a rubber band and we want it to be um, pretty tight on our patient to um, help the veins pop up a little bit. So got our tourniquet. Now, obviously I'm at home, so I'm not using a bedside table or you know an area where I'm by the patient's bedside or in their room. But what I typically would like to do is get a piece of tape and you can use your first piece of tape as like a barrier to protect, um, you know, to keep it clean, whatever strips of tape. Not everyone uses tape. I prefer tape because it helps me anchor down my wings when I've gotten the IV inserted and I'm not like fumbling and trying to grab other things. So piece of tape here, maybe two, I guess. Piece of tape here. All right. And this is what I'm gonna use to clean. All right. And this is something you can do prior to actually putting um, your tegaderm on the patient you can write your date, time, and initials here, date, time, and credentials. So once you insert, put your tegaderm on, you can put the date there. You'll also be doc documenting in the electronic health record as well. Next step is to open our catheter. So again, I'm using a 22 gauge, one inch, I don't know if that really matters, but 22 gauge for sure is something we give in bedside reports. So for documentation purposes, once I insert this, this is the patient's left hand and so i'd be inserting a 22 gauge in the left hand for this um every connection that you make you want to ensure that it is clean so again you don't have to have gloves on but you just want to be careful um, whatever you're touching is clean so if i take this off my flush i don't want anything touching this right and i want to make sure i have a clean connection over here with this little port Catheter. So, so you're gonna make your connection here. Notice I'm not touching anything. Okay, my flush is connected here. And I'm just gonna loosen this ever so slightly so that when I go to flush it, um, it's, it's still on there, it's still clean. So when I go make my connection, all I gotta do is pop that thing off. So for the sake of this, we'll pretend I flushed it. I actually don't wanna use this one. But that's how you would connect it, just right here. I actually like using these little extension claves. They're just a little bigger and I feel like it gives me more, um, more, more to work with. So again, checking expiration date, it is not expired. It's good, not tampered with. And this is my clave that I want to use. Again, same concept. I want to try to keep everything as clean as possible, um, not contaminating anything. So in this case, I'm making my connection here. This is gonna be ever so slightly loosened. And what I like to do is I just like to leave it in the cozy. So I'll go ahead and flush it a little bit. 
just enough so it's like yep it's flushed there's actually a little bit of water in there it's flushed and it's ready to go so i'm just going to set this to the side all right so i've got my flush prepped i've got my tegaderm ready I'm ready to start right so let's just do hand hygiene one more time just to be safe whoa that was a lot all right, so hand hygiene. Again, I've already introduced myself to the patient. I've already asked orientation questions. That's a big thing I tell my students to do. Prior to poking anybody or inserting anything, we wanna make sure that patient is alert and oriented. They're gonna follow commands. They're not gonna be moving their arm when I'm trying to start an IV with a needle. And are they in any pain? Because prior to doing something that might potentially be painful, I wanna make sure I address their pain. So now I'm ready to start. My hands are clean. I'm gonna put my gloves on. Um, I'm looking for a clean area. You know, there's no, in this case, I mean, this, these veins have a lot of track marks because we've used these mannequins multiple times in our skills lab. But we're looking for a site where we see a clear um, place to insert the catheter. So for the tourniquet, you do a little, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but you do a little like X sort of thing. So you're gonna pull kind of tight. You're gonna do like a cross over like an X, and then you're gonna tuck one side through. Let me see if I could do that. So basically, once I've got the IV inserted, I, I can pop my tourniquet, a smooth thing um, from this angle. So it's kind of tight. Again, I wouldn't really be pushing a patient's hand down, but for the sake of this mannequin, I'm making like a little X, like a crossover. Oh, whoa. I've got my little cross here and I'm tucking one through. Um, so let's say I've identified, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use this vein. It looks really good. And again, there's different ways of cleaning. For this one, I could do a hashtag. I could do a circular motion. I just wanna clean it for 30 seconds. Um, also, like I said, the little kits might come with something like this. You're gonna push, it'll pop. So you're gonna engage this. You're gonna do like, you could do like a little hashtag motion, back and forth, back and forth, up and down. And what's gonna help also is that it's going to um, help that vein kind of pop up a little bit. All right, so we'll set that aside. Sometimes what I've done also is I'll clean the tip of my finger in case I wanna like palpate, because I'm touching a clean site. All right, so we'll say that that's dry now. I've prepped my flush, I've got my catheter. One thing with these, what I do like to recommend is that you kind of, um, loosen it up a little bit. So you don't wanna fully engage it, but you just wanna loosen it a little bit like this because you're gonna do a motion. So you're gonna use your pointer finger to push the gray part forward, and you're gonna use your thumb and your middle finger to also at that same time simultaneously be engaging. So it's like a, that kind of motion. All right. And then we are ready to go. We've got our site prepped, we're ready to poke the patient. One thing we do for our skills checkoffs is what, um, we have our students check the distal pulses. So we'll have them apply the tourniquet and they will check and ensure that they still feel the distal pulse. Um, in the real world, do we do that? Probably not. But in that case, we'd say, yep, their pulse is good. All right, so we've got our tourniquet on, our site is cleaned, we're ready to go. I'm gonna tell the patient before I poke them, right? All right, Mrs. Jones, I'm gonna go ahead and start your IV. I know she's alert and oriented. I know she's not in pain. She's agreeing to me inserting the IV. Again, I've already kind of prepped this a little bit, loosened it up here. My side is clean. I'm gonna go right here at this angle. And you, it's kind of like you're landing a plane. So you're going in and you're gliding in. Now for the sake of this uh, mannequin, I might not see blood return, but if you do get a good vein, you'll see this whole um, line here, this extension fill up with blood and then it'll stop right here at this little nub. All right, so here we go. Being safe, putting that there. All right, and I'm gonna anchor the vein. So sometimes you can just kind of use your thumb to kind of anchor the vein here. I'm gonna go in like at a 30 degree angle. Little poke here. All right, I'm in. I'm gonna advance my catheter, so I'm gonna Again, do a motion where I'm pushing with my pointer finger and and you hear a little click. That lets me know I'm in. 
All right, I'm gonna pull off my sharp here. That comes off. Again, if I have a good vein, I'll have blood right here in this little uh, pigtail. Once I'm in, I wanna pop my tourniquet. That's one thing that Dean students a lot of times is they go and they've got it and they forget to pop the tourniquet and they start flushing. So, all right, I'm in. I'm gonna use my piece of tape. How are you feeling, Mrs. Jones? I'm good. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tape over the wings here. I'm ensuring that I'm not going over the insertion site. So if you can see that here, I'm in, the catheter's in, but I don't wanna put anything over the insertion site, only over the wings. And to me, that's just an extra um, safety thing. Um, so we'll say, all right, um, I'm in. At this point, I could toss this in the sharps or I can just wait till I'm done because I want to finish what I'm doing. So sight looks good. I don't see any signs of infiltration, um, no edema or anything like that. It looks like it's in place, but we're going to double check, right? So if, again, if I had a good, um, a good vein, blood would go into, into this area here. I want to clamp this off. There's a little clamp here. I'm going to clamp that off. Now this is where another thing comes into play uh, with asepsis. We wanna make sure we are being aseptic. So like this flush is in my cozy, this is clamped off. I'm gonna pop this off. I'm gonna grab my flush here. I'm gonna disconnect this here. And I'm gonna make my clean connection here. All right. So I'm gonna unclamp here and I'm gonna flush. Okay, it's flushing really well. Again, if I had blood, I would see that blood clear up and it'd be clean, um, it, the line would be clear, so great. All right, everything looks good. Now I can disengage this because I don't need my flush anymore. I flush with, let's say, two to three mLs. I know it's in place. Now I'm ready to put my tegaderm on. I'm gonna place my tegaderm right over and you can see like a little window here. So I'm gonna place my tegaderm over this. I can put my little catheter in here. And as you can see, I've got my little window there. I can see how my site looks. So everything looks good, it flushes well. I'm kind of pushing that down. I'm gonna take this extra portion off. All right, and just for extra secure, I like to have another piece of tape where I can kind of anchor this hub down if I'd like to, so it's not flopping anywhere. Secured there, okay. And then um, I have my label here, date, time, and initials. I'm not only documenting here, you know, on the site itself, but I'm also documenting in the electronic health record. So I would say, you know, date, time, initials. I inserted a 22 gauge into the left hand, no pain, no phlebitis, no infiltration, patient tolerated. This is also just an extra securement. Um, this is kind of a wonky position, so I might not need this, but you could always add it maybe even here if you wanted to, or down below for extra secure um, security. Um, but that's basically how you would insert a IV with the um, Nexiva. This is a Nexiva um, catheter. Again, discarding my sharps, assessing my patient again, making sure if they need anything before they leave the room off my gloves, discard of all my supplies, and hand hygiene. Make sure you're making sure, you know, my patient's bed is locked and lowered, and if they need anything, I'll let them know I'll come back, and then I would confirm orders if I needed to do something further with the IV. That's how you use the Nexiva. Um, I'll try to do another video just kind of showing different types of catheters and how to insert those as well.